<laughs> I don't think I can stand that up. Oh, maybe it could. There we go. God calling. Uh, oh, good. It's cooling off quicker now. At least I think it is. It just feels less hot. Well, maybe I just feel better. <laughs> Sometimes God does that as soon as I start recording these emotionals. You know, it's kind of neat that the Lord sits down with me and begins to instruct me and talk to me. And I begin to kind of go, oh, thanks, Lord, I needed that. Or, yeah, you know, I, I kind of been neglecting that area. Or, yeah, I should do that, you know, and I kind of yield a little bit, you know, and I kind of like sheepishly, you know, kind of go back to, you know, okay, God, you know, yeah, let's do it, <laughs> you know. <laughs> And it's so much easier, you know, in my relationship, you know, I don't know about your relationship, but in my relationship with God, you know, I probably beat myself up more and at the same time take for granted grace more than most. So I think of myself on the one hand as the chiefest of sinners and on the other hand, the one most expedient of grace <laughs> because I need it. Maybe you're the same way. <laughs> Maybe sometimes you really need some grace. So if you're not perfect, then you're in the right place because God can speak to both of us, you know, in our devotions and in our devotions. And because we're choosing to spend that time with God, he's more than willing not only to forgive us, but to cleanse us from all unrighteousness and to help us and to encourage us and to strengthen us, and to bolster us and to prepare us. So that we would be stronger men and women of God and children of God as we grow in grace. Friend of mine, what man calls conversion is often only the discovery of a great friend. What man calls religion is the knowledge of the great friend. What man calls holiness is the imitation of that great friend. Perfection, that perfection I enjoined on all, the being perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect is the being like the great friend and in turn becoming to others a great friend too. Isn't that great? <laughs> I am your friend. Think again of all that means. Friend and Savior. A friend is ready to help, anticipating every want, hand outstretched to help and encourage, or to ward off danger. The voice of tenderness to soothe tired nerves and speak peace to restlessness and fear. Think of what, to you, your friend is, and then from that, try to see a little of what the perfect friend, the tireless, selfless, all-conquering, all-miracle-working friend would be. That friend, and more, even than your heart can imagine, that friend am I. Were I to read my kingdom, my kingdom of the child hearts, the doctrines of your churches so often there would be no response. But the simple rules I gave my followers are known, loved, and lived by them all. In all things, seek simplicity. Boy, ain't that the truth. You know, if you get too carried away into whatever church you're going to, and you get too carried away into all the doctrines and all the dispensations of everything that there is out there to learn or to apply and to be and to get confused and to get abused and to get reused and to get through it, then... You find that the simplicity that Jesus said, you know, is almost contradictory to what you're being taught sometimes. You know, it's like, well, wait a minute. You know, I thought he said his yoke was easy, and yet, man, I feel burdened down and twice as hard to get through it. <laughs> is that like you? It's like me, I'll tell you. But when you read what Jesus said, although it does smack you in the face and kind of slaps you around a little bit, you know, you also find that he is saying that I will forgive i did not condemn i will apply mercy that he himself has given us his life so that we wouldn't be fearful to come to god and ask for mercy and grace when we need it or ask for help in time of need or to ask him for anything that we require for our day how much simpler life would be if we really choose to obey that simple commandment that he gave us which was to just Come to him. And Jesus said, come, just as you are. And he wasn't talking about salvation. He's talking about afterwards. Just come to him. Come. 
all the other sinners and everybody else, yeah, well, fine, whatever they're going to do, they're going to do, you know, and religion has its way of working in people's lives, but at the same time, I think we need to simplify it a little more and get back to just Jesus, you know. He can tell you what you need to do, and he can show you where you need to go, and if you really want to get caught up in all the religious stuff, you can do that. But if you just want to have a wonderful relationship with God and kind of take each day, one day at a time, <laughs> let me tell you, Jesus has got a word for you, and it's one word, and it's just simply, come.